So as we get to Colin O'Reilly here, here's the thing. I, I know that they have this idea that if you go 30 minutes, 35 minutes, 40 minutes, it becomes an epic all-time classic match. But that's not what makes an all-time classic match. What makes an epic all-time classic match is when you have an epic all-time classic match. If you have people invested for 35 minutes. How fucking long yeah. was Volter and Ciampa? 16 minutes? 15, 15 18 minutes. Fucking yeah. classic. Classic. They did not need to go 40 minutes to have that classic. This match, I thought that Adam Cole was great. I thought that Kyle O'Reilly was great. I thought the match went twice as long as it probably yeah. needed to. It went forever. And you could see the crowd start up here, mm -hmm. and they went like this, and they went like this, and they went like this. And we hit that 25 and 30 minute mark, and it's like an empty building. They're dead silent. And these guys are working their asses off. And the fans, every now and then, will see something and they'll clap. And then they're silent. They're fucking exhausted. They've watched, yes. they've watched six hours of wrestling in two days. And I know people are going to go, well, people watch six hours of wrestling all the time. Yeah, but the first day, even though it was only two hours of wrestling, it was two hours of very big wrestling. Where you've got a lot of emotion, and there are these great matches, and you're cheering, and there's emotion, and the two hours are over, and you're fucking exhausted. It's more than two hours when you watch a show like that. And then you have another show, which is three hours and 30 minutes long, and the last hour or so, you got one match where nobody even knows who to cheer and boo, and then a 40-minute match, and by the end of this match, these people were just, they were not into it. And they tried really hard. But it just went way, way too long. It went way too long, and for most of those 40 minutes, it didn't appear to be building to a finish either. It, it, it was just, they were just doing stuff to do stuff for 40 minutes. Uh, all the stuff was cool. They did some stuff with a chain in this match that I have never seen done before. They attached the chain, like linked it to the rope somehow, and did a bunch of spots off of that. It had a guy run into it. That was all very creative. They went through the stage like Bam Bam Big, a little BS. Yes. For the first 30 minutes, I was like, well, they're doing a match. It's a good match. I've seen many bad matches. This is not a bad match. This is a good match, but it's just a good match. It wasn't until they went through the stage that I actually started to care even a little bit about what was going on. And we cut to the chase here because there's no point in going over the details. But eventually, there's a chair set up in the ring. And uh, it's set up legs up like they're going to impale a guy on it. But Cole ends up falling on it in between the legs and draped over it. And Kyle wraps the chain around his knee, which he had done earlier. Because there were good storytelling elements in this. There were, there were setups and callbacks and foreshadowing and payoffs and all of that. But it just went so goddamn long. See, that's the other thing, too, is if this match would have gone 40 minutes in front of 12,000 people in a building at a takeover that was a one-day takeover, fucking would have been unbelievable. Probably, yeah. But... We've learned in the pandemic over and over again, almost nobody can do a 30-minute match in a limited crowd and get it over. And, I mean, I've seen it happen in New Japan, but they got buildings full of people, way more people than they're here in the Performance Center. It's a small crowd that had been there for a long time. You can't go 40 minutes in front of this crowd. I feel if I took Cole and O'Reilly, who, let me reiterate, are fucking great, if I took Cole and O'Reilly and I said, this Tuesday on NXT, you guys are going to do another unsanctioned match, and you got 13 minutes, I think they'd fucking tear the house down. I suspect it'd be a lot better. 40 minutes? Too long. It just did not work for this crowd. And when it doesn't work for the crowd, it doesn't work for me. When the crowd is tired and dead, mm -hmm. I'm struggling to stay awake. So as a viewer, it's a bad combination. Mm -hmm. And I felt bad because they're killing each other. In front of a crowd that's just watching. And it amused me. They were doing all sorts of horrible things with weapons and chains and tire irons and toolboxes and chairs. All these lethal weapons they're using. And at one point, Adam Cole hits a low blow. And Beth Phoenix screams, that's immoral! And Wade Barrett, always the voice of reason, shouts, this entire match has been immoral! 
because he's right. And that set up at the very end, uh, O'Reilly hit the low blow that knocked Cole off the ropes, put him on the chair, drops the uh, chain, assists a knee drop on Cole through the chair and pins him. And there you go. There was no uh, Roderick Strong, no Bobby Fish, no the sneak attack. Just Kyle O'Reilly won, went to the back and raised his fist in the air. And... And listen, I don't want to. I don't want to come across like I'm burying the match. No, it was a good I match. Mean, it was a good match. But I expected that. I ex- I was certain going in, this is going to be the best match of the show. I had an outside chance of being better than. That's Volta exactly and what I thought. It 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 it, it under delivered to me as a fan. It was. I, I but thought that's in not the to end, say it was bad. Right. No, it's not bad. But but it it was good. But it was disappointing. Yes, it was good. It, but it was disappointing. It was certainly was not as good as Walter and Champa. No, I, think, I thought Balor and Cross was better. I think EO and Raquel was probably better. And that's a lot of matches better for Kyle O'Reilly and Adam Cole. Kushida, the Kushida match was... Uh, you could argue that one. I'm not going to... There's no argument. All right. it, was, it was better. Yeah. But you know what? If Kushida and Pete Dunne would have gone 40 minutes, it would worse. not have been better. <laughs> it it would have been, been much worse. Although at least they would have been in the opener of night one, so they may have been able to pull it off better. But being in the main event of night two and going 40 minutes, it was like this deck was stacked against them. Yeah. And uh, and the house won, and that what they say. The house always wins. I believe is the show on yes, Friday. Yes, the house always wins. So there you go. Did like well, the, the uh, babyface triumph though. That was. If you're nice. a big fan of these video clips here on YouTube. You're missing out on full length shows. Down there on the bottom right hand side of the screen, click that join button, and when you sign up, you'll have full access to all of the shows that we've got up on YouTube. Over 300 at current count. Wrestling Observer Live, The Brian and Vinny Show, and Figure Four Daily with Filthy Tom Lawler and Lance Storm. Hit the join button, sign up today. You can also click subscribe, and you'll always be alerted as to when new shows and clips are available.